Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a joy to once again see you through this uh, online worship, worship service. Maybe uh, prepare ourselves as we come to worship the Lord this morning. Let us respond to the call to worship. Come, all who are weary. Christ strengthens us with love and grace. In this strength, we can do all things. We are here ready to receive God's blessings. The choir lead us through the introit hymn, Alpha and Omega. Let us say the opening prayer together. Mighty God, pour out your power and strength on us. Grant us the nourishment we need to receive your word. May your presence fill our lives and carry us forth, preparing us to be your people and equipping us to do your work in the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let us put our voices together to sing the opening hymn, Come Christians, join to sing. The Psalter reading this morning is taken from Psalm 17, verses 1 to 7 and verse 15. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from the lips free of deceit. From you let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. 
Concerning what others do, I have avoided the ways of the violent by following your word. My steps, my steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Saviour of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I wake, I shall be satisfied with beholding your presence. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day that you have brought us back together as a congregation to worship you. Every Sunday as we gather in our homes to worship together through this online worship service, we are reminded of your love, your grace and your mercy that you have kept us safe and taken us through this journey during these difficult times. We come this morning lifting up our hearts and praising you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork, says the psalmist. And together with those words, we lift up our hearts truly in awe and wonder. For you are majestic. There is no other name to be worshipped but yours alone. You have held us by our hands and brought us thus far through, the through good times and rough times. We praise you, for you are the Sovereign Lord. We confess our sins to you, O Lord, and seek your forgiveness. You know our hearts and how we have denied and dishonored you and have sinned against you. We seek your mercy on us, our families and the church, that we may repent and turn to you and your word. We pray, O Lord, even as the Holy Spirit convicts us in our hearts, even right now, that we will surrender our hardened hearts to you, Lord, that we may come to the foot of the cross, that we may be washed by the blood that was shed for us on the cross, that our sins may be forgiven, our hearts renewed and our minds renewed, that we may walk with you and become more like you. Help us, O oh God. We also come this morning thanking you, Lord, for your love, and your grace upon us in our everyday lives. From morning till the day, end of the day, you keep us under your shelter. You protect us from all harm. You have provided for all our needs. You have been with us in our going and our coming. 
We thank you for your healing, for your strength day by day in our lives. Oh Lord, we thank you and we praise you for every blessing we have received from your hand. We pray that your hand will continue to be upon us and grant us a peaceful life in the midst of these uncertain times. Help us to keep our faith strong and steady even as we pass through these uncertain times. Help us to overcome the pandemic. We come against this disease in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and ask, O Lord, that you remove this virus which is destroying the lives and livelihood of the people. Oh, Father, we know how this virus has threatened the entire world. And, Father, the country is suffering, even as the spread keeps increasing. Oh, Father, we pray for all the people who are involved in putting a stop to this spread. But, Lord, unless you give us the wisdom to the leaders of all countries, the people who are working on finding a vaccine for this virus and all those who are working on the front line. Lord, unless you help us, Lord, we will not be able to overcome. And so we seek, Lord, your, love, your mercy upon us. Father, this morning we come and also ask, O oh God, that you help us as a church to continue to be a witness to the world during these days, that our words of hope to the world and our works of mercy will surely testify to your love to this world. Make our lights shine, the Lord. Make us, help us, the church, Lord, especially, to take this opportunity to speak of your love and the hope that we have in you, Lord. That the world may turn to you, O Lord, and seek your face. This morning we come, Lord, and ask that you continue to speak to us this through your word. Make your, make your word, Lord, to speak deep down into our hearts that we may turn to you and walk in obedience. We surrender ourselves and ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing the Lord's Prayer as a choir leads us. continue to worship the Lord through our offerings and our tithes as we have already announced to you and you know how to send the offerings and tithes either, either through the online um, banking or to keep them aside and bring it to the church when you are able to come and worship in the church let us sing during this time the offertory hymn rise up O man of God i 
The scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Haggai, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your panelled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honoured, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else, the ground produces, on people and livestock, and on all the labour of your hands. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. This morning's message is brought to us by our pastor, Reverend Anil Kumar Samuel, on the title, Set Your Priority. Very good morning, and uh, it's indeed a joy to be in God's presence, together to worship the Lord and to listen his wonderful word. Dear friends, this morning, the topic for our meditation is set the priority. Priorities are something very important in each and every one of our lives. We make choices that determine our priorities. Dear friends, every single life, every single day, we have things and we prioritize things so that we can have a smooth functioning and that would lead us to that purpose or the destiny that we intended to arrive at. When it comes to the people of God here in this book of Haggai, we see something very precious. We see the values of the people of God. We see the priorities of the people of God. We see the place and we see the purpose with which they are back in the Jerusalem. Interestingly, when we understand this scripture passage in the book of Haggai, we understand out of God's abundant love, 
he brought his people back to Jerusalem. Today, I would like to draw three things from the passage that has been read to us. Number one, that is the preparation for God's mission. Number two is procrastination and God's lessons. And finally, paving the way to be experiencing God's presence. Paving the way. Dear friends, number one, God prepared kings and kingdoms so that his people could be released from captivity and that they could return to Jerusalem and build the temple and glorify God in that part of Judah. God's plans are amazing. God moved the heart of a pagan king, Cyrus, the Persian king. And lo and behold, in the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, we see in a beautiful way this king speaking. And dear friends, we do understand that, you know, as people of God return, God had a plan in choosing these kings and kingdoms, governors and high priests, and he prepares all of these people and these communities so that God's children would return. God's children would enjoy his presence. God's children would come back to worship him. God's children could restore their lifestyles so that those lifestyles can be pleasing in the sight of God. In the sight of God. Dear friends, God chooses people. You know, in these passages, God chose Jerubbabel, God chose Joshua, and here the prophet Haggai, you know, God chose him so that God would send his message across to his people. Wonderful. God involves people from various walks of lives. We are called to be in God's purposes for which God prepares things so that we can be in the center of his purpose to fulfill his mission. And here in this context, the mission for the people of God was to rebuild the house of God. The mission was straightforward. It was simple and it was clear. He spoke to the governor. He spoke to the prophets, the common people for one reason. The mandate was clear and it was to build the temple. During those days, dear friends, for the people of God, temple is not just uh, an, an edifice. You know, te temple is not just another building, but it's a holy place where people come to offer their sacrifices, where people meet God, where they have fellowship, where they have an encounter with God, remembering His covenant with them. And therefore, dear friends, it symbolizes the nation's close relationship with the Almighty God. And God is preparing His people for this mission. When we understand this concept, why is that God is preparing? Because God was concerned about His people and their spiritual restoration. God loved them with an everlasting love. And that's what we see in the scriptures right from the beginning. God loved them with an everlasting love. No matter what, He wanted them to be His witnesses. No matter where it is, He wanted them to be a blessing to the nations around. And that is the reason why He made a covenant with them and He said, I will be your God and you will be my people. God prepares people, dear friends. God prepares places, dear friends. And God prepares many resources and beautiful things around in our lives too so that He can fulfill and accomplish His purposes, His mandate in our lives and through our lives. Wow. And something happened here in Haggai chapter 1 verse 2. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Look at that. It's not the right time to build a temple. That is the voice of the people. And here God has a case to present. The children of Israel, they were procrastinating. They were putting off what was to be the priority in their lives. It was like saying, one day I'll get it right with God. One day I'll get my prayer life right. One day I'll go and offer the sacrifices. One day I'll look into this aspect of my spiritual formation. One day I'll look all these things pertaining to God. And they kept procrastinating. 
Dear friends, we know what we should be doing instead of giving excuses. For the people of God down here, the will of God was to be of most, of utmost importance. But that has become a secondary thing. Alas, they put God on the sideline. Dear friends, this scripture that is before us is not just a scripture of the yesteryears for those people down there during the time of Haggai, but this scripture is real to our lives today, right now, in our context. That is the reason why in the scripture in Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We may be having many things around in our lives, many things to look into, many things to choose, many activities around to keep us busy. But in the midst of all, God's word is inviting us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God is concerned about his people. God is concerned about the matters of spirituality. God wants to dwell with the people, among them, in them, so that he can be the center of their lives and direct them to accomplish his purposes. Wow. God wanted to live right in the center of our lives too. <clears throat> God wanted to be in the center of our lives. Israel is the community where God made a covenant and wanted to dwell with them. God wanted to make his priorities clear and wanted to reveal that to his children. And that is why he says, hey, I'm here with this mission and purpose so that you guys can rebuild the temple. So that I can dwell among you. So that your lives will blossom. So the people around will know that God whom you worship is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He wanted to be relevant to his people in every aspect of their lives. How true it is even in our lives, dear friends. Jesus builds, he wanted this life to be built. We are the temple. Of the living God. He's so mindful of our lives. He wanted to build our lives. He wanted to build our spirit. He wanted to make our lives worthwhile where God dwells in us and where God wanted to be with us and in us so that He can drive our lives and He can lead us and He can make our lives a blessing. Not only to us, our communities, but to the people around. God has a case to present here. In verse 3, Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in your panel houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Look at this, dear friends. Their priorities are misplaced. They are procrastinating here because their heart is somewhere else. 20 years, it has been 20 years ever since they returned to Jerusalem. They were living in the panel houses. And immediately God says, and this temple here is in ruins. Is it time? For you yourself to dwell in your panel houses and this temple to lie in ruins. It reveals the heart of God. Perhaps he was grieving out there. And God says, now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts in verse 5, consider your ways. Your priorities may have gone heavier, but here I want to say something. You know, God's heart is revealed down here, dear friends. 
consider your ways you know god is saying consider your ways that means this is the time for you to examine your ways how is your walk with the lord it is like people had a priority but it was their own house it was their own welfare it was their own community own people own things they were working they were going for plantation they were they were doing all things as per normal but lo and behold here they kept god out of their lives no place for god and his house in them down there in that community and here god invites them consider your ways consider your ways you guys think that you are living in panel houses well 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 let me say something in verse 6 you have so much and bring in little you eat but do not have enough you drink but you are not filled with drink you clothe yourselves but no one is warm and he who earns wages earns wages to put into a bag with holes this is what god had to tell them you had your priorities in life but it's not working for you and therefore god comes into them through this word with his heart of compassion and he says consider your ways consider your ways <laughs> i think in verse 7 again he says consider your ways then the lord of hosts says consider your ways it's like emphatic verily verily i say unto you it's something like that consider your ways mend your ways come back to your senses examine your ways so that you would understand your priorities if we do the things god's way it works if we do it contrary it doesn't it doesn't so god is inviting them go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple that i may take pleasure in it and be glorified it's like god is giving them solutions lord what are we to do now yes 20 years have gone we have built our houses we are living we are working hard we are wearing clothes we we but but nothing is to be seen before our eyes it's like placing our wages in the bag with holes we are wearing clothes but you know we are not warm at, at all and god is giving solutions he is saying go up to the mountains bring in the wood and build the temple dear friends god out of his mercies he's setting priorities for his people so that they could consider and they would be obedient to god go get the wood don't stop working maybe you have gone to that mountain many a time but he has start doing it for me it is like saying make room for me in your lives it is like saying keep this importance something of this importance make me the center of your lives prioritize make me your priority in your passions in your professions in your various activities you have been doing maybe in your talents in your giftings make me your priority keep me in the center of your lives god is saying no 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 don't discard that values but lo and behold make me the center of your lives and give that priority to me dear friends either we can someone uh, as written we can either have god's presence or god's resistance if we choose to obey god we have blessings we have this sense of satisfaction we have our purpose very clear and we would be marching towards accomplishing that purpose god is ultimately looking for his children who are obedient who will prioritize things in line with the things of god god wanted them to pave the way so that his presence can be seen and that he could take pleasure 
and that he may be glorified. Dear friends, God wants to take pleasure in all of our activities. God wanted to be glorified in all that we think, in all that we deliberate. Perhaps not only in our personal lives, in our families, in our ministry, and in our communities. This is God's desire. And here he says, well, well, <clears throat> I'm going to do something. And, this, and these guys, they, they've obeyed. They've turned their, their hearts unto God. So they were stirred up by the Spirit of God. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord tells them, I am and I will be with you. I am with you, says the Lord in verse 13. The Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke to the Lord's spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. I am with you. The task may look Herculean. Maybe the task is too heavy to bear or to progress or to move on. But here, the Lord assures his presence with his people. That's something amazing. Dear friends, even in our lives, maybe the task is too big. The situation could be challenging maybe something that is in our cup is too is too difficult for us to bear but god says i am with you i am with you this morning may this message give us strength may this message inspire us to set our priorities and pave the way for god and his presence, his word, to be with us so that we might bring glory and honor to his name. The blessings do come with the right priorities. When we place God first, he is pleased and he is glorified. May God bless us even as we continue to make him the center of our lives. May God direct us and lead us step by step to fulfill his, his purposes for His glory. Amen. Amen. Let us now respond to the sermon, that's the word that the Lord has spoken to us, by singing this closing hymn, O Spirit of the Living God.
Dear friends, we have almost come to the end of the service and I have the announcements for you. Please take note that we, will, we have started the Sunday worship services as of today at our church premises. Earlier this, uh, during the week, you would have received a broadcast message to register to participate on the on-site service here at the church. Now, there are some uh, things to take note. These Sunday worship services at the church premises at number 8 Short Street in our church uh, is only allowed for uh, 50 persons at a time, which means to say at, at any one service, there can be only 50 persons uh, participating in the worship service. This number is restricted due to the uh, MCCY requirements uh, to curb the spread of the community, spread in the community. So they are slowly opening it up. And therefore, at every service, also we have two services, just as our usual service in the morning, English and Tamil at 8.30 and 10 o'clock. And these services will be shorter, also because there's a requirement that there's no singing is allowed during the worship, uh, because the, the, the increase of droplets in the air when you sing. And so we are, we are obliged to comply with all the rules of MCCY, it is required. And therefore, we have, uh, we have, uh, catered, we have uh, put together the worship service as a liturgical response service with communion. Um, so if you are able and you want to come and worship at the church, you are most welcome. Please take all the precautions that's necessary that's given to you in our WhatsApp message. And even in the uh, registration, the link that's given to you where you register, there's in information there what you need to do. Check your temperature before you come. And as you arrive at the church, please follow the, all the ushers um, leading you and make the safe entry um, registration and come and be seated with one meter apart and, and participate in the worship uh, service, worship the Lord together. And then after the worship, we are required uh, to also return to our homes without much, uh, uh, we, wa we are not able to stay behind for any form of fellowship. Um, uh, when we are required to return home immediately. So, there are some of the, some of the requirements by the MCCY. So, please um, um, come if you are able and worship together. And please uh, also be uh, aware, be, uh, follow the news that's sent to you through our uh, church broadcast news where we will keep you updated of any changes. So, till then, this is the latest information that we have of about our worship at our church premises. So, hope to see some of you in the coming weeks and some of them are already now gathered at the church this morning for worship. God bless us. And let's look at the slide that's before us. It also tells us about our Sunday, our, our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthdays and their wedding anniversaries. Let us remember them in our prayers. May God bless them. And also, take note of the tithes and offerings and how you can send them to the church through check, through internet banking, or by keeping it aside and bringing it to the church when you come to worship the Lord here at the premises. Let us recite the memory verse for August. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.